Good morning, and welcome to St. Clair of Assisi Parish. If you're new to our parish or just visiting, we're happy to have you join us. Today we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Not even death could keep him from us. So mighty is his love that he transformed the evil of the cross into a blessing through which he can eternally unite us to God. He is here. He is risen. Alleluia. Today we have the following announcements. It's time to celebrate your Catholic marriage. The Celebrate Catholic Marriage Experience coming Wednesday, April 3rd at 6.30 in the cafeteria. For information on how to register, check the bulletin for more details. On Monday, April 8th, we will celebrate the solemnity of the Annunciation of our Lord with our first Meatball Fest after the 10.30 All School Mass. All are welcome to Mass and the luncheon. The second collection today benefits our retired priests in the Archdiocese. Your support helps assure our priests receive the essential care they need, including physician services, hospitalization, nursing home care, vision and disability care, now and for years to come. You may use the envelopes at the end of your pew to make a gift. Please stand now and join in the entrance hymn. Our entrance hymn is Jesus Christ is Risen Today, hymn number 172. Also, take note that the Gloria is sung right after, and that can be found on page four in the music supplement in the front.
name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as you join together this beautiful Easter Sunday, let us call to mind our sins, we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray, O God, who on this day through your only begotten Son have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant we pray that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all people, but to us, 
the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not what is on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord.
Christus spes mea, precedit suos in Galilea. Shemus Christum sun exise, amon tuis vene, tu nobis victor ex miserere. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple was faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloth there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloth there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloth, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple who went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed for they did not yet understand the scripture, that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, happy Easter. Rejoice. The good news starts today. Christ is risen from the dead. To understand the good news, we have to know about the news beforehand. So Good Friday and, uh, and Easter, and that talk by Monsignor Shea from Bismarck, North Dakota, got me thinking about a 90s movie, uh, Outbreak. Maybe you've seen it. It's got Dustin Hoffman and Morgan Freeman and Rene Russo. It's a thriller. With a trailer, actually, it's probably as creepy and frightening as Jaws. Uh, there's a small California town, and this monkey carrying a lethal virus has scratched a human, and the virus goes airborne and threatens to become an epidemic. And these doctors, his team goes in and they break the news. The whole town has to be quarantined by the military 
and the heroes have to race against the clock to find an antidote before the virus can leak out and annihilate humanity within a matter of hours. If you're making a movie about our bad news, you could call it the original outbreak. So Monsignor Shea, he visited St. Louis for the Catholic Sikh Conference this January and described the epidemic, which has already gone global. It's every bit as deadly, only it bides its time. Thousands of years ago, it struck humanity all at once in our first parents and has since spread to every generation. In each place, humanity has traveled, it has brought ambition, and with it is fashioned works of brilliance and practicality and splendor and a yearning for greatness deep within our chests. But everywhere, its members have plundered and oppressed each other and warred. They use one another for gain and they despair and they die. Sin is the disease and death haunts us. You know, of all the creatures of the earth, it's human beings alone who seem ill at ease with their own existence. We're still infected. So Monsignor Shea, he's the president of the University of Mary, he describes the young people, and he's looking at his own university, for example, he's in the last 10 years, they've experienced loneliness, anxiety, and deep sadness on an unprecedented scale. And when as a university president, he's pressed for an answer, he admits that part of the solution is probably better access to mental health services, but maybe, just maybe, these students are onto something. Maybe they not be, might be wrong for feeling sad and anxious and burdened as a result of growing up in a world without God. In a world where everything is permitted, but nothing is forgiven. Maybe anxiety makes a little too much sense given the bad news that the devil is personally trying to kill us. Your situation, my situation, you know, it, re, it goes back to the epic drama that took place, began before there was time. In our situation, the disease wasn't transmitted by a monkey, but by the Lord of the Flies, the devil himself. And he didn't try to get Adam and Eve with bodily pleasure or money or possessions or get them to turn on each other. That would all come later. Instead, he went for their freedom. He spoke to them concerning their great destiny with dominion over all they saw, even their promised share in divine life. But he made them question God's truthfulness. God was only standing in the way. He's only a rival that we can't be trusted. It's his happiness or ours. We believed it, and so often we still do, and then Satan takes us captive to sin, lying to us constantly. He's brought that curse of death upon every last one of us. And that's the story of Mary Magdalene's life. It's summarized pretty well up to that point. You know, we didn't know, we don't really know a ton about her. But in Luke's gospel, she's introduced as having met Jesus somehow, and he cast out not one, but seven demons. Which is Bible language to help us understand she was tormented by every kind of deadly sin. She was the perfect microcosm of humanity's bad news until Christ found her. But from that point on, she began to be transformed by love. Her heart grew stronger and stronger and stronger through repentance to the point that while 10 of the apostles hid, she clung faithfully and sorrowfully to the cross on Good Friday with St. John and the Virgin Mary. And today, she becomes the apostle to the apostles, the one who shares the good news first. You know, in the movie Outbreak, the scientists tirelessly search for the monkeys so they can find a cure, but all the while, frantically afraid of catching the virus. Understandable. Christ's mission is different. He is sinless, but he purposely takes the disease of our sins on himself, finding forgiveness for every single solitary sin of the human race, all the while teaching us of love for the Father and for one another. It was possible way back then and it's still possible even in our polarized world today. But he needed it to find this way to spread the antidote of his grace beyond himself. And so he tricked the devil into killing him. The one man whom death cannot hold. The night before he died, he washed the disciples' feet 
to witness the humility needed in service to our brothers and sisters. And he gave them, he gave us the medicine of life, of eternal life, in the Eucharist, commanding us to go and spread his merciful love in memory of him to all the nations. So how do we respond? The bad news is still out there. There is no shortage of heartbreak. The devil continues to lie to us and works on prying us away from God and from one another. But no longer do we have to listen to his fabrications or his lies anymore. The wound of sin is deep in us, but through our baptism we've been joined to Christ's death. In other words, we've been inoculated to death, taking his death, his death to sin into ourselves and his resurrection Together, the antidote within our souls, meaning we, we know how to die and rise over and over, and we can do so every day of our lives in little acts of love that prepare us for our final Passover. Yes, the wound of sin is deep, but Christ has made a home for God in our core, in the most profound caverns of our souls. The worst thing the devil can do now is to get us to give up. But if we don't, we win. It's that simple. If we don't give up, we always win. And if we search our lives and see them for the dramatic adventure Christ has shared with us in freeing us from the bad news, we can let him lead us into joy. Then we can share our own portion of the gospel with those who need to hear it, like Mary Magdalene. Because the New Testament continues to victory. Let us rejoice, for Christ is risen. Christ will come again. If you please stand together on this Easter Sunday, we'll renew our baptismal promises. Dear brothers and sisters of the Paschal Mystery, we've been buried with Christ in baptism so we may walk with him in newness of life. And now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God and the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sins so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us the forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life.
Let us now lift our minds and our hearts to our Heavenly Father in our prayer of petition. For the church, that we may celebrate the victory of light over darkness, of life over death, and of hope over despair. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have chosen to join us for the first time on this Easter Sunday, that you may find in our community a place of belonging, love, and spiritual growth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who find themselves walking in darkness or doubting their faith, that they may encounter the risen Lord who brings life to their journey and peace to their hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who struggle for peace and justice, that God will provide a new springtime of faith that will yield an abundant harvest to their efforts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to violence, that God will turn hearts from using violence to settle differences, open options for dialogue, and protect the innocent from harm. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that Christ may welcome them into the eternal light and the joy of God's presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, hear all these prayers of petition and those who hold quietly within our own hearts. Please bless them that they be in accord with your holy will as you place them upon the altar of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our offertory hymn can be found in the back of the pew missile, hymn number 263, The Strife is O'er, hymn number 263.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exulting with vastful gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously born, reborn, and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying is destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise that they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them the forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, 
And with eyes raised to heaven, to, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, to those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. During communion, if you're in the regular part of the church, you come forward as commun for communion as normal. If you're in the gathering space, uh, there'll be a communion minister coming out to you, so you can stay back there. Uh, it'll be quicker that way, I think. Um, also, if you're visiting from their faith, and you're not Catholic, feel, please feel welcome to come forward and get a blessing by crossing your arms over your chest, or you can remain in your pew and pray. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
join in singing at the Lamb's High Feast, we sing hymn number 91 in the back of the pew missile, hymn number 9.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. On behalf of Father Yates and Deacon Trainee and all their deacons and our choir who sounded beautiful today and the children that were part of our choir and our seminarians and servers, thank you for being here. Happy Easter to all of you. Have a blessed Easter season. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life and the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now the days of our Lord's passion have drawn to a close. May you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you forever. Amen. Let's be God. Please join in singing number 82 in the back of the pew missile. Alleluia, alleluia. Hymn number 82.